nations as well. You've all come out in this heat for the day. The next character who's coming up, he didn't choose this. He's been put into the free speech battle. He's been prosecuted, taken to court over a joke. And it was a funny joke. And can I just say, certain people you meet and you love their character. From meeting him, he's such a good character. Let's get him up. Representing Scotland, Count Dracula. Hello. My name's Marcus Meakin, but for the people that don't know me, I go by Count Bankula, one line. Over two years ago, I decided to pay a plank on my girlfriend. She thinks her pet pug is the cutest thing on earth, and she wouldn't shut the fuck up about how cute the pug was. So I decided to turn the dog into the most horrible thing that I could think of which was a Nazi. I taught the dog to respond to the phrase, gas the Jews, and don't. <laughs> and to do a Hitler salute whenever I said Z Kyle. I filmed the dog's antics and put it on YouTube and hoping to show it to my girlfriend and catch her completely off guard. Uh, in the video I provided clear context to what I was doing and why I was doing it. Shortly afterwards, the police came to my house <laughs> Yeah. Arrested me, placed me in handcuffs, and took me outside to the waiting press, who the police had tipped off to the exact date and time of my arrest, so that they could get photographs of this PR stunt. I was taken to jail, held overnight for court the next day. I was then released to await my trial. My trial would go on for two years twice as long as the actual Nuremberg trials. During these two years, I lost several jobs, I was defamed by the press, I've received threats of violence, and I've had to constantly put up with the press and members of the public lying about who I am and what I actually believe in. While at the same time throughout those two years, trying to comfort my girlfriend and mother, who were terrified that I was going to prison. And me and my family had to go th through all of that for two years because I made a joke. For the entirety of my trial, the prosecution tried their hardest to find the evidence of me being a Nazi, a racist, or a white supremacist, and in the end, they found absolutely nothing. <laughs> no evidence whatsoever of me being a racist or a white supremacist was submitted by the prosecution, because absolutely none existed. So the only path that they could go down was to assume the thoughts that I had in my head when I made the video. The courts decided what my thoughts were and presented their decision to the public as fact, when it's obviously completely untrue. I'm amazed that more people are concerned that the courts now have the ability to overrule the reality of what your thoughts are, replace it with their own interpretation and then convict you over the interpretation that they gave you. 
Apparently a lot of people still haven't read 1984. I provided clear context in the video to what I was doing and why I was doing it. An explanation was given, but people didn't want to acknowledge the explanation. People instead wanted to act like the trumped up high school English teacher examining a passage from a book trying to find the hidden message or meaning that the author was trying to get across when there isn't one. There is no hidden message or meaning behind what I did. I wanted to play a prank on my girlfriend and I'm a shitlord, right? That is the reality of the situation and I see, I see no reason why I should suffer because people have willfully chosen to ignore reality. In the aftermath of what happened, I've decided to keep fighting to protect free speech because after seeing my mother repeatedly crying at the fact that her son could get sent to prison just because he hurt some people's feelings, that was more than enough for me to want to make sure that what happened to me doesn't happen to anyone else. And because I want to protect free speech, I have been branded a racist, a Nazi, and a white supremacist. And that I am part of the alt-right. To set the record straight, I reject any notion of superiority or inferiority based on race. I reject the idea of an ethno-state. If you want to live here in peace and not only respect the freedom of others, but fight to protect the freedom of others, then you are welcome in this country. I reject Nazism and any other form of far-right ideology because I have a deep, seething hatred for anything that even has a hint of authoritarianism and that goes for the far left too. These are the things that I've always believed and if you actually watch my videos and look at the content I produce, you would know yourself that that's what I believe. But despite that, there are people online who still call me a racist and a white supremacist and some of these individuals can waste hours and hours a day on Twitter saying these things to me but they can't spare five minutes to do some basic research. <laughs> and any famous comedians who dared voice their support for me, not over the joke itself, but over principle, they were attacked by their peers and told to drop their wrong think opinion. Their peers told them, get the fuck back in line. Because to these people, image matters more than principles. People seem to think that if someone wants to protect freedom of speech, it means that person is far right, or at the very least right wing. People have even branded this event as a far right event because of what they think of the speakers here. Well then, where are the left wing free speech events? Where are the left-wing voices coming out in support of free speech? The reason these speakers are here today isn't because the right have claimed the principle of free speech, it's because the left have abandoned it. Freedom of speech is not a right-wing goal, and it's not a left-wing goal. It's a human goal, it is a human right that everyone deserves. It doesn't matter what race you are, it doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter where you are from, it is a right that we all must protect because it belongs to all of us. Free speech isn't owned by the right, it isn't owned by the left, it isn't owned by an organisation and it certainly isn't owned by the fucking government. It's owned by us, the citizens of the United Kingdom. And in close, I've actually got a message for Antifa that are here today and any other far-left groups who are in favour of placing restrictions on what people can or can't say. I was actually one of you once, many, many years ago, and back then, one of the things that we took pride in was how anti-establishment we were, and one of the last things that we would ever have done is allowed for the government to have more power. My, how things have changed. The reason that we would have never allowed the government to have control of something is because we all knew when it comes to the government, you give them control of one thing and it never ends there. They will keep going and going until they control as much as they possibly can and that was one of the most important lessons that we learned and it influenced every decision that we made and it really is sad to see that this new generation will never taught that lesson and have instead opted to saw off the branch that they're sitting on. Laws are accessible to every party that gets voted in. Any party that is in power can use these laws. 
Right now it's the Tories, next it could be Labour, then it could be the Lib Dems, or whoever gets voted into power. But one day a far-right government could get voted in. You might roll your eyes at that, but none of us ever thought Trump was actually going to fucking win, did we? So it is possible that one day a far-right government could get voted in. A far-right government who now has access to these same laws. And if that day ever comes, Antifa, what do you think is going to happen to you? You'll want my help then. And I'll give it to you. But what we need to do is work together to make sure that whoever gets voted in has no access to any laws that restrict our human rights. We need to work together to protect our freedom. Abu Gibraf.